But ladies and gentlemen, to take the program further, I would like to get into the main session, uh, which is the ambassador's conversation. To join us, uh, we would like to recognize some significant individuals who will be speaking on uh, the ambassador's conversation. First of all, I would like to recognize, joining us right now, Assem Hanafi El Safi, the ambassador of the Arab Republic of Egypt to Nigeria, the former permanent representative of Egypt to the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. You're most welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Okay, um, sorting out internet. Um, also, we are having um, Dr. Benson, Alfred Banner, the High Commissioner of the United Republic of Tanzania to Nigeria, who is also the Ambassador, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Eastern African Corporation. He is also a Chairman, Governing Council of the Institute of Finance Management. To also join us, we have the High Commissioner of the Republic of Namibia to Nigeria, also the Ambassador to Cameroon and Chad, and also doubles as the permanent representative to ECOWAS in person, Mr. Humphrey Gayseb. Due to time constraint, I cannot go beyond the time I have to talk about what this je fine gentleman have done so far, are still doing presently. But to take us further, to moderate the session, I would like to invite once more the founder, CEO, African Economic Congress, uh, host executive and producer, Moneyline with Nancy on AIT. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome once more Nancy Nanji. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Nancy. So let me take it from yes, here. Yes, <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, uh, ambassadors, and thank you all for joining us uh, as we continue our discussion. It's a three-day conversation. What I'll be doing right now is moderating uh, the ambassadors' conversation. And Moses Mwokedi, our uh, MC, has, has really done uh, the intro. So let's get started because we have quite a lot to talk about. Let me start my first question from uh, the ambassador uh, of uh, Egypt to Nigeria. Ambassador, if you can hear me, I'd like you to answer this question, uh, which is, the ambassador of Egypt to Nigeria. If you can hear me, I'd like you to answer this question. Uh, Egypt was the first country uh, that COVID-19 was detected uh, in Africa. Can you really speak to me about what's been happening uh, so far, the Egyptian economy and uh, some of the recovery processes right now are uh, ongoing uh, in Egypt? Okay. Okay, I've been told that we can't get uh, the Egyptian ambassador for now. I think I saw him earlier, but since I can see uh, the Namibian ambassador uh, right now, uh, His Excellency, can you please... His, he, okay, His Excellency, please, can you uh, answer for me how COVID-19 is impacting uh, the Namibian economy? Your country is one that is huge on tourism. Uh, how is COVID-19 impacting your economy? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nancy. Uh, uh, I first of all want to congratulate you on this second uh, session of the African Economic Congress, um, which we are very happy to attend. Uh, your first historic Congress in 2019 was very, very much successful. And uh, it was a good opportunity to network and meet with many Nigerian business people. Uh, in terms of Namibia, uh, currently, I can inform you that uh, from around March to September, the government of the Republic of Namibia declared a state of emergency and also imposed, uh, that means uh, imposed uh, um, control measures to really uh, fight this pandemic. Uh, as a result, uh, we closed our embassies and uh, we also closed our borders for those six months. So you can imagine that the economy really suffered um, uh, quite a lot. And uh, right now, even many economic sectors are struggling uh, Oh, 
You hear me? Yes, okay, good. Um, Ambassador, thank you for joining us uh, today. I would like to ask you uh, this question as we get uh, the um, uh, Ambassador of Egypt and Namibia uh, back on. Uh, Ambassador, if you can hear me, uh, an election was just concluded in Tanzania and President Magafuli just won again. Um, how do you think that this will impact uh, Tanzanians' uh, economy moving forward? Um, you are perhaps one of the largest economies in East Africa after Kenya, definitely. Uh, but <laughs> speak to me about what is happening, talking about recovery efforts against COVID-19 in your country. I think, hello? Nancy, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly, Ambassador. Hello? Yes, I can hear you clearly, High Commissioner. Yes, let me first thank you very much, Nancy, for inviting me and Moses for moderating a very, very informative session. Uh, and second, let me congratulate uh, His Excellency President John Combe Joseph Magufuli for a glorious victory, which is a victory for democracy, a victory for the Tanzanian people, and his ruling party, the Chama Chama Pinduzi. Uh, the re-election of His Excellency President Magufuli means a lot to the Tanzanians. During his first five years in office, he has demonstrated beyond the doubt that he is all geared to move the country to self-reliance, which was the linchpin and at the heart of the first independence government. With President Magufuli in office, we have seen Tanzania transiting from a poor economy to a middle-income economy. We have seen Tanzania embarking on mega projects like constructing a standard gauge railway line, Mwalimyelele hydroelectric power. He has also served as a role model in terms of leadership. He has cleaned the public service. It's now almost a, a, a corrupt-free public service. He has put to book all people who we are, are involved in corrupt practices. He has actually reinvigorated the, uh, the airline of the country, Air Tanzania Air Corporation Limited, which had only one plane at the time he assumed the office in 2015. The airline has now 11 airplanes and really reinvigorated. So with President Magufuri in office and under his leadership, we expect Tanzania uh, to move towards a middle income, a really middle income country. But President Magufuli, above all, his leadership is pro people, is pro poor. He has encouraged the development of small, medium enterprises, put in place robust policy responses to really help the poor. So, under the leadership of His Excellency Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania, we expect a lot of development programs to, only, to also combat uh, the consequences, the adverse economic effects that uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, is bringing down to the continent. So okay. uh, as Tanzanians, we are really proud of getting President Magufuli back into the state house. Okay. Um, Hi, Commissioner. I'll come back to you a bit, but let me go back to the ambassador of Egypt uh, to Nigeria. Uh, I asked the question earlier. I can uh, see him now. Yes, uh, Ambassador. Okay. I, I asked the question earlier, if you can hear me right now, about uh, Egypt being the first country in Africa that had the first case of COVID-19. Speak to me about the recovery process ongoing. And do you think that as Africans, that we are handling the issue of this pandemic seriously? Oh. Okay, Ambassador, are you still there? I can see that your bandwidth is low. Okay, I guess that uh, when we are able to... Yes, hear... madam, I can hear you now. Okay, okay. So, Ambassador, um, I asked the question earlier that Egypt is uh, the first country where 
uh, COVID-19, where COVID-19 was first, uh, you know, uh, reported. Speak to me about the process ongoing in Egypt uh, for the Egy Egyptian economy to recover. Uh, so much of uh, loans from the IMF. How uh, is Egypt doing and Egyptians doing right now? And how do you think that as Africans will be handling the process of the pandemic? Very well. First of all, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Nancy, for, uh, for hosting me. It's a privilege for myself, uh, representing uh, Egypt, to uh, attend this uh, very august uh, uh, economic uh, congress, African Economic Congress. And uh, of course, I greet all the distinguished uh, uh, participants, and uh, I salute uh, uh, Her Excellency Dr. Joyce Bande as well for her very uh, insightful um, uh, statement earlier on. Um, and can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Ambassador. Go on. Very well, very well. Well, coming back to your uh, important question regarding our what uh, have not been really uh, uh, much different from others in the continent. Of course, we were faced with this uh, vicious uh, pandemic. Uh, also through a, a, a foreigner uh, traveling to Egypt. And uh, uh, we imposed lockdown, we imposed uh, 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 not, not, not total, not that very strict because of the economic activities, of course. And uh, uh, we uh, had to make, a, the government had to make a stimulus package, uh, fiscal ex in, in, in economic uh, package, uh, when uh, all loans, uh, interests have been postponed. So ever since from March to September, all uh, Egyptians uh, incurring loans, their interests were, uh, interest payment were, were postponed. Uh, and of course, uh, the informal uh, sector, which makes uh, the majority of the economy, irregular workers, have been provided with checks, uh, which amounted to the minimum wage in Egypt. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, many of the laid-off workers have also been compensated. Uh, the uh, public health uh, system is resilient, very much as in Nigeria and many African uh, nations, owing to the fact that we have had uh, several exposure of, of uh, previous pandemics. So the uh, local uh, and national domestic and national public health services uh, have been uh, very much uh, familiar with measures to, um, uh, you know, uh, isolate, to mitigate, to uh, to trace uh, the contacts, and uh, of course to administer the PCR where available. Uh, and this, of course, has minimized the uh, infection rate uh, drastically, and I am happy. I am, uh, you know. Okay, um, Ambassador, we seem not to, to hear you uh, again. Uh, but, but let me turn to the Namibian Ambassador because I think I can see him uh, on the screen uh, right now. Um, hi, hi, Commissioner. Ca can you speak to us about how you think that Africans have really, you know, uh, how do you think that COVID-19 has impacted Africa right now? Uh, uh, thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, uh, in terms of this uh, pandemic, uh, first of all, uh, when uh, the first cases started uh, arriving in this continent, uh, many governments have to take uh, drastic measures. And these were not only health measures, but also uh, financial measures coming up with budgetary provisions to fight this pandemic. So domestic resource mobilization was a very important uh, element of fighting this pandemic. <clears throat> it means that uh, resources that were meant to be targeted for development projects uh, had to be budgeted, uh, diverted and budgeted to fight this pandemic. So definitely it is an impact because um, African countries will uh, experience slow growth, slow economic growth uh, due to the embargo of this uh, uh, pandemic. 
uh, countries like Namibia uh, to start from scratch uh, to make resources available for this uh, fight against the pandemic. So you can <laughs> realize that um, the COVID-19 pandemic will have really a serious impact on African countries. Uh, and many of our countries will, as I said, experience low economic growth. Uh, in the case of Namibia, uh, we had to start from scratch uh, to provide for testing capacity. Uh, previously, uh, we were relying on um, on a few senders, but now we have uh, really uh, done well in terms of testing. We have a number of senders, not only in the capital window, but also in the regions. So these were not funds that were meant initially to fight the pandemic, but had to be taken from funds that were for development projects. And we are very happy that uh, our testing uh, uh, capacity has increased uh, dramatically. Um, furthermore, uh, the effect on Africa's tourism uh, sector is also going to be quite dramatic. In the case of Namibia, for six months virtually, we could not receive any tourists mm. because the country's mm. borders were closed. And, uh, very few people were coming in, mainly Namibians and uh, Namibian residents were able to come back. Uh, and at the same time, we had many evacuation flights of foreigners who were leaving from Namibia to various parts of the world. So our tourism sectors will be affected very badly. Uh, in Namibia, we have seen many companies have closed down because they are unable to provide for salaries for their workers. Uh, many, many uh, companies in, uh, uh, really are still trying to reopen but uh, definitely uh, with the slow number of tourists that are low number of tourists that are arriving, um, it's going to be a challenge to, to cope economically. Mm. So I think mm. our continent really uh, is worse off in terms of our economic development. And furthermore, uh, we can really see that African uh, resilience in terms of dealing with uh, something and unexpected as this pandemic. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, High Commissioner. Let me move over to the High Commissioner of uh, Tan Tanzania to Nigeria. Uh, Your Excellency, sir, um, of course, there's a consensus among the three of you, and even from High Excellency Joyce Banda when she did speak earlier on that it is time for Africans to come together to build Africa. Even in my opening, uh, in my own welcome address earlier, I did also say the same thing, that it is time for us to build a new Africa. Do you think that as African leaders, uh, enough has been done to change the African narrative uh, which the other economies or which the other uh, continents do have of us, a, a narrative of poverty, a narrative of slow economic growth, a narrative of anger, a narrative of things not doing well in Africa. Do you think as African leaders, which you are all, uh, that we're doing enough in that regard? Thank you very much. Now, the doing enough is very much relative. But to my understanding, I think many countries on the African continent are struggling to change the African narrative, the African hunger, internecine wars, the bad governance, responsibility, poor governance, and the like. Something is being done at the country level. But then we need to do more. There is still room for improvement. We still have uh, scenarios where uh, people are not engaged enough to their development programs. Our economies, our social uh, policies are not inclusive enough. Secondly, we have different socioeconomic uh, bodies at the regional integration level. We have, for instance, ECOWAS, East African Community, SADC, uh, IGAD, and the other related uh, uh, regional bodies, they are not interacting. They are not talking to each other. Mm -hmm. We need to do more to ensure that these bodies, which bring 
together, which converge on different dimensions, work together for the common good of the African people. Uh, we, we need to, to devise a mechanism that would bring together, would harness efforts, would create synergy. For instance, the recent initiative uh, to introduce the African continental free trade area, that is a very much welcome initiative. I'm not sure whether it is going to deliver the intended goods, but it is an initiative to the right direction. Let's concentrate on supporting the African continental free trade area for the common good of the African people. Let us also concentrate more on piling up, harnessing our resources. I think is it, Her Excellency Joyce Banda has said it all. Let us work together as African people for the common good. Let us pull together our resources and teach our people that depending on handouts from without, uh, from outside the continent is not the right option. Being invited to the to Beijing in China under the Sino-African uh, conferences is not the proper option. The proper option is to move towards self-reliance. And that's what my president is trying to do. We know Africa, is, as Madam Joyce Band has correctly put it, eh, we have sufficient resources. We have homegrown initiatives, which if, if, if managed well, we can rebalate ourselves from the yoke of economic uh, colonialism to a more independent Africa at all levels, politically and economically. Mm -hmm. I believe that Africa has the resources, has the right people, the right human resources to be able to drive the economic frontiers of Africa forward for the good of the people of Africa. If we work together collectively, leave aside our regional blocks, Sadek, East African community, if we create room for the African continental free trade area to, to grow. If we nurture this baby, uh, I am sure we can make a difference and we can become a self-reliant continent, a continent of 100 bi uh, uh, billion people. I mean, a million people cannot go. I mean, we cannot afford to continue uh, singing the song of poverty, mm -hmm. uh, hunger, internecine war, irresponsibility. Let us work closely. Let us work together under the institutions that we create at the continental level to increase free movement of people, free movement of capital by working through self-reliance strategy. I think we can achieve what we want to achieve for the common good and for the future generations. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much, uh, High Commissioner. Let me come to Ambassador of uh, Egypt to Nigeria. Um, Your Excellency, so much has been said this morning in terms of let Africa be united, let Africa uh, be, you know, one, let Africa come together that we can get ourselves out of the dust where we are in right now. Uh, my question to you, Ambassador, is that of... Africa is a continent of 1.3 billion people. Africa is blessed uh, having a youthful population. We've seen what's been happening in the last few years, or even, in, yes, in the last few years. In Egypt, for example, of course, we saw the Arab Spring in Egypt, in Libya. We saw the NSAS protest in Nigeria just a few days ago and all of that. How do you think that African leaders are handling the question of the youthful population putting the youthful population to work. Okay, let me ask that uh, same question to the Namibian uh, High Commissioner as we try to get uh, the uh, uh, Egypt's ambassador to Nigeria. Uh, Your Excellency, sir, if you heard my question, uh, please do answer what I asked. If the youthful population in Africa is being harnessed well, Uh, definitely, yes. Um, uh, the, if you look at the whole ideal of the African Union 2060, 2063 agenda, uh, at the core of that agenda, 
basically is the African people. So who are the African people who will be here 50 years from now? Mm. Those who will be here are, are people who are today uh, regarded as, as youth. So first and foremost, uh, I think African governments, African leaders uh, have provided enough for a role for African youth to play uh, in the whole movement towards uh, creating an Africa we want, an integrated, prosperous, peaceful Africa that is driven by its people. So I believe the youth have a very strong role to play because in terms of what will happen 50 years from now, roughly 43 years from now, in 2063, uh, all those activities, programs, uh, ideas will be driven by our youth. Uh, African leaders uh, are cognition of that fact that our youth and our people in general need to drive this revival towards the Africa uh, 2063 agenda. So if you take a country like Namibia, um, roughly 40% uh, of our population is below the age of uh, 20. Mm. So we can say with certainty that when you have a robust youthful population, uh, they are most likely to play a role in all spheres, whether politically, economically, uh, socially, the youth will make an impact. So uh, it is true that our youth are playing a very important role. Uh, at times, it is uh, not very clear uh, in terms of representation uh, whether the youth are making an impact. But definitely, they are part and parcel of uh, today's political processes. And I believe the future belongs to the youth, and they will definitely uh, continue to play a strong role. Okay. Uh, a country like Namibia uh, is very grateful for this continent because we feel that our future uh, is intertwined with the future of this continent. The African continent has played a very important role in terms of Namibia's liberation struggle. Uh, African countries and African people from all the the countries in the continent have contributed immensely to Namibia's liberation struggle. And we are very happy that we are part and parcel of this great continent. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, High Commissioner of Namibia to Nigeria. Um, Ambassador, if you can hear me now, I don't know why I'm not getting you all the time. Uh, perhaps network issues, but I can see you right now. Yes, so Ambassador, I'm coming uh, to you with the same question. Uh, if you think that indeed Africa belongs to the uh, youthful population, just like the Namibian High Commissioner has said, uh, are the leaders really handing the baton to Africa's youth? Because if you take a look at the statistics of leaders across Africa, the median age could be 65. Uh, yes, uh, well, you, you made a very uh, uh, important observation. And I'm sure uh, the youth are, are being more empowered now in uh, uh, example, Egypt now, more youth, you, you find more young people assuming uh, local councils, assume governors. Uh, the women uh, have been, uh, of course, given uh, uh, sometimes a lion's share of local councils. And, uh, the parliament is, is almost 40%, uh, of course, uh, women and so forth. So the, uh, young, the young people are empowered more and more, and this is a very encouraging sign in Africa. Uh, but, uh, but, of course, uh, I would like to just focus on two things that have been uh, mentioned by previous, uh, you know, ambassadors. Uh, one is the uh, uh, the African continental free trade area, which has, of course, some 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 uh, pending uh, issues. But the, if activated, would be a very tremendous boost to uh, to to African uh, economies. 
And of course, the second thing is uh, Oh, okay. The network uh, over there in Egypt has frozen, as we can see. That is also one thing we should do better as Africans for interconnectivity. <laughs> I think we need to do better at that. Okay, let me s ask uh, the Tanzanian High Commissioner the same question. If you're still there, Your Excellency, um, the same question. Are we harnessing the youthful population? Are we harnessing the youthful population? President Magafuli, that just won, is over 60 years old. So when will the young people of Tanzania take over leadership? Uh, thank you very much, Nancy. The question of leadership is one thing on the African continent. We need to have a system of nurturing the youth, preparing the youth, mentoring the youth for their readiness to take over the responsibility of leading their countries, leading the economies, leading social welfare policies of their respective countries. We haven't done enough. And on this regard, I commend the interventions that the African Development Bank under the able leadership of Dr. Deshina Kwinomi have made to introduce a specific program that in, infuse, that induce into the youth uh, leadership competencies, and that is commendable. If all African bodies, African continent have specific programs to nurture the youth, to mentor the youth, to develop their competencies, Africa will be prepared uh, for, for good leadership for good leadership. And next, at the moment, we have a problem among the youth and they feel that they are marginalized. They are not given the place they deserve in their societies. In my own country, we have about 14 million youths who are underemployed by World Bank standards. In Nigeria, you have a lot of people who are either underemployed or unemployed. Unemployment among the youth is a time bomb. We have seen in Nigeria, we have learned what has happened, and that is a lesson for the entire continent of Africa. We need to socialize, we need to prepare the youth to take leadership eclons into their hand, to learn from the present so that they can drive the future of their countries. That is one. Again, uh, as we deliberate on post-COVID-19 uh, pandemic challenges. I don't think if at all we have been able to really mount a robust policy response that would address the fundamental problems that are facing the youth, especially in the area of employment. Are we generating employment? Are we preserving jobs? Are we training them to meet the future, are we digitalizing the economy? Eh? To what extent are our governments on the African continent eh, meeting the challenges? Do we know really the challenge of the youth today? Those are fundamental questions that our African leadership needed to answer as they collectively deliberate on matters affecting the continent. Let us be serious on the issues facing our youth girls and boys. Let us also improve our curricula in our learning establishments, especially at the university level and the other tertiary institutions. To what extent is the university curricula on African continent today responding to the future needs of the youth? Actually, do the universities know what the future entails for the youth? Those are the challenges that should really uh, form the basics of discussion uh, among our top leadership in order to address the felt needs and the challenges of the youth. If we left them unattended, they will force us to attend them. Let us take what it means to understand the problems and challenges facing the youth and respond properly with clear, implementable, 
uh, uh, policy responses. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you very much, uh, High Commissioner, for that. You've just said something fundamental, and I think it's also coming from your background as a school teacher. If indeed the educational uh, curricula in Africa is teaching what Africa needs tomorrow, today. All right, I can see that uh, the, uh, um, um, the High Commissioner for Namibia is there. I would also say that we are having uh, audience virtually all over the world, I must say. So uh, you can, I think the last two, three minutes, we can use it to ask questions. Just put your questions on the chat so that we can ask the questions. Now I can see Ambassador uh, Asem, uh, the Ambassador of Egypt to Nigeria. I, I had asked you like a question before, but the network is misbehaving today. <laughs> and that was why I said earlier that as Africans, we need to do better in terms of even interconnectivity. How do you think we have done? Talking about Egypt, your country is one of the most advanced in Africa. Of course, Nigeria prides itself as the biggest economy, but your country is not also doing badly in terms of advancement. Speak to us as in what other African countries can also learn from Egypt. Uh, well, I was just going to uh, echo what uh, what you have just said now, uh, having problems with my uh, net, of course, internet, which is common now, and uh, the ve very value of internet technology and connectivity and broad uh, broadband uh, penetration uh, is, 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 is more valuable than ever. Uh, as far as education now, most of the education now in Egypt is going online. Uh, even in public schools, uh, where uh, uh, students are provided with a tab or, a, or a, an iPad, um, uh, many of them are locally manufactured, by the way, uh, which mm -hmm. will enable them to, to uh, tune more to their uh, school curriculum from home. Although, of course, uh, internet connectivity still remains a, an obstacle, but um, the broadband uh, investment is uh, and the um, the startup ecosystem is, is on the rise. Uh, we are also addressing the power shortages and the uh, uh, boosting the, uh, the uh, electricity uh, grid supply. We have now more than uh, 50, uh, 50 uh, giga, gigawatts uh, of, 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 of stations and, um, and more and more are being built so as to feed the countryside and feed the rural areas with a reliable uh, supply of power that would enable, of course, digital technology to to pro, to, to increase and to and to improve, and so uh, um, uh, of course, e-commerce has flourished now as much, very much as Nigeria and and and, and other countries. E-commerce, e-trade, the startups, e-payment are very inclusive and more inclusive than ever. So uh, all this is a promising venue, and I think their impact on development is 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 huge, and this gives me a reason for hope. Uh, of course, uh, that African economies will make a turnaround if they focus, the governments focus more on investment in the digital technology. Okay. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Now, in closing, we Thank just you. have about two minutes. So, um, High Commissioner uh, of Namibia to Nigeria, just in closing, in about 30 seconds, what are your closing remarks? Uh, it's, um, we'll try to get advancement and even more development for Africa. That is why... Uh, the vision of African Economic Congress was birthed. Um, how, how fast do you think we can run as Africans, very quickly? Uh, I think first and, foremost, first and foremost, we will run faster if African women are part and parcel of all activities in this continent. Yeah. If you take a country like Namibia, uh, we are making a lot of progress. Uh, because of the, the decisions that were taken by our leaders to involve women and to have to increase the number of women in leadership positions. So that is a big challenge for this continent that we continue, uh, we should continue to increase the number of women in leadership positions. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, as we said, in the spirit of our discussions, and with the aim to move towards the Africa we want, we need to increase the representation of youth uh, in the same manner in, in all the activities, in all the spheres uh, of, of, of governance. Um, 
you, we, you can see in terms of what you could take away from Namibia uh, is that uh, definitely over the past few years, we have increased the number of women in parliament, in cabinet, and so on. Mm. And today, we are able to say that uh, Namibian women are fully represented in government structures. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, High Commissioner. Let me come quickly to the High Commissioner, Tanzania. Just very quickly, um, in 30 seconds, how fast should we run? Should we run like a Hussein Bolt, or should it be a marathon? We need a supersonic speed, perhaps a marathon. But in order to succeed, to reach a successful end, we need to work collectively together. We need to echo our concerns collectively as Africans. Let ECOWAS struggle for debt cancellation, debt relief. Let Namibia join. Let the East African community join. Let SADC join. We should work collectively as Africans. United we stand, divided we fall. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you very much, Ambassador Asemo Anafe, and my brother, uh, Gay Sebu, Ambassador of Namibia. Thank you very much. It has been a very, very rewarding uh, 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 interactive session and a pleasure on my part to also interact with Her Excellency Joyce Banda, uh, the retired president of Malawi. Thank you very much, uh, High Commissioners and uh, Ambassador. Uh, thank you very much for being part of this Ambassador's Conversation. Like I said at uh, the beginning that this is not the end of the conversation. As Africans, we should continue to talk and act. Uh, talking, I guess, is too much. We should begin to act. Thank you very much, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, for this Ambassador's Conversation. Okay, um, I'm going to be handing over back to uh, the MC Moses and um, to take us further, yes, to take us further uh, in the program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nancy. Well, there you have it. Unity, homegrown initiatives and gender inclusion is what we need as Africans to pick up the race. Ladies and gentlemen,